Flash, the fastest man alive. Quicksilver, the fastest X-Men. Sonic the Hedgehog, the fastest creature in the galaxy. Makari, the fastest woman in the universe. Four of the fastest beings ever to exist. But who's ultimately coming out on top here? Who's truly the fastest, the most powerful of them all? Well, that's what we're gonna find out. What's up guys, I'm Daniel and this is Danco. We do fight breakdowns every week, plus the occasional power ranking video like this one or things like that. So if that seems interesting to you, we'll sit back and enjoy the video. Hit that like button. If you want to, well, hit the subscribe button while you're at it. Now let's get to it. Barry Allen was a student at Central City College who was struck by a bolt of lightning one fateful night, gaining the ability to move at incredible superhuman speeds. Using these powers, he became a superhero in Central City known as The Flash, fighting against criminals, even becoming a founding member of the Justice League as he helped to protect the Earth against Steppenwolf and his Parademon army. But at his core, Flash is deeply motivated to try and prove his father's innocence for the grisly murder of his mother, so much so that he used the Speed Force to travel the multiverse and go back in time, all for a shot at saving his parents. Flash's primary power is obviously his superhuman speed. He's the fastest man alive. He's so fast that he can run faster than the eye can see. He can move through cities or across the country in an instant, or even slow time down to a crawl. The world is frozen all around him. People become like statues, and Flash is able to live and operate in this space between time. Now, Flash's speed definitely does vary. He's not constantly going all out or moving at top speed in order to try and preserve energy. But when he's operating at his best, Barry is able to move at the speed of light, arguably much, much faster than light speed. And as Flash moves way beyond the speed of light, he's able to go back in time and go back in time again and again and again. An alternate version of Barry went back millions of different times. And while Flash started out a bit goofy and uncoordinated, he would even stumble over his feet and knock himself out of a fight. By the time his movie came out, Barry is in a whole new class of hero. He's trained hard with Batman and tapped into a whole new level of power. Batman was able to show him how to alter the density of his fist, meaning that he can now punch at super speed and with super strength. And Flash is now strong enough and skilled enough to take out Kryptonians. Was able to basically one-shot a lot of these Kryptonians, blowing apart their armor and taking them out of the fight. And that's not the only thing that Flash can do. As he runs, he generates lightning and a kinetic charge, and he can then throw this lightning around at enemies. And it's some seriously powerful lightning too. Flash is able to use it to stagger and even knock down Kryptonians. He's also mastered the ability of phasing, something that comes in real handy. Peter Maximoff, also known as Quicksilver, is a mutant with the power of super speed. He's also the son of Magneto, just unbeknownst to his father. He eventually becomes a member of the X-Men, a group of mutant heroes led by Charles Xavier. Quicksilver can move at supersonic speeds, instantly moving faster than the eye can see. He was able to casually outrun bullets fired by Pentagon guards and rearrange them before they could hit their intended targets. His speed is so insane that seconds after the initial explosion of the X-Mansion, he was able to save the dozens of inhabitants that were inside, all while goofing off, and managed to do it before the explosion reached peak combustion. So that means that Quicksilver was moving at speeds over 2 million miles per hour, casually reaching Mach 3500. 
Quicksilver is able to run faster than Storm's lightning. He's able to perceive the world just as fast, too. Everything appears to be in slow motion to him, even the flap of a bee's wings. Quicksilver is able to generate some extreme force momentum of each punch or hit that he throws, and it ranges from knocking out grown men with just a simple tap from a finger to legit flooring apocalypse with a punch. Quicksilver's body is also enhanced to survive the impact of his speed, meaning his joints are as strong as spring steel, his bones are several times harder than calcium, and his muscles are proportionally enhanced to match. In fact, kinetic energy, inertia, friction, pressure have absolutely no effect on him. Sonic the Hedgehog is an alien hedgehog with super speed who hails from Mobius. After being forced to flee to Earth, Sonic remained in hiding for 10 years until he accidentally made his presence known, becoming the target of the sinister Dr. Robotnik. However, Sonic managed to banish Robotnik from Earth and set himself up a nice, happy life with the Wachowski family. As time went on, Sonic tried beginning a superhero career, but his moment really came when Robotnik returned with Knuckles the Echidna, seeking the Master Emerald. Teaming up with his new ally Tails, Sonic embarked on a globetrotting adventure to stop Robotnik, during which he befriended Knuckles. After defeating Robotnik, Sonic would form a new order with Tails and Knuckles to safeguard the Master Emerald from evil. Sonic possesses the power to move at incredibly high speeds, to the point where Tails believes he's the fastest being in the whole galaxy. He can run across states or even the whole country in an instant, move so fast that he appears to be in multiple places at once, or move so fast that the entire world around him appears to be frozen in place. And even then, when the whole world around him is frozen, Sonic still appears to be moving at super speed. Rockets, bullets, and missiles are practically still for him. What's even more impressive is that lasers are basically frozen in place as well, even though lasers should be instantaneous. And what's even more impressive than that is that Sonic is able to easily fight and operate at these kind of speeds. A man is the little guy surprisingly powerful when he throws an attack. He can plow straight through metal, actually overpower Knuckles with his speed and power, he can one-shot huge vehicles or blow up drones. All of that is done from his spin attack or his more revved up version, the spin dash. But another aspect of Sonic's power is his ability to generate chaos energy, something that's all linked to his emotional state. Whenever he starts feeling extreme emotions, Sonic will start generating blue energy all over his body, sort of like lightning. And this energy is so powerful that he can unleash an EMP blast that covered across the entire Pacific Northwest. Or Sonic can take all this energy and harness it for himself, greatly amping his strength, his speed, and his spin attack. Makari is a member of the Eternals, a genetically engineered race created by the Celestials and sent to Earth in order to help progress humanity's development and protect it from the Deviants. Makari specifically helped to introduce sign language to people. By 1521, the Eternals had accomplished their prime objective of defeating the Deviants, and so she and the other Eternals decided to disband and separate. Makari decided to relocate to the Doma, buried under Iraq, where she started her goal to explore the Earth and collect various objects and artifacts. In the wake of the blip, though, Makari was summoned by Cersei to rejoin the Eternals to stop the emergence. By design from the Celestials, Makari as an Eternal is able to possess superhuman strength Durability, speed, agility, stamina, reflexes, and healing, all numerous times greater than any normal human being, as well as legit immortality, 
and being able to manipulate cosmic energy to a certain degree. And it just so happens that for Makari, with her cosmic energy manipulation, she's able to boost her already superhuman speed, making her the fastest woman in the universe. Makari's role for the Eternals was interplanetary scouting, meaning that she's easily able to run all around the Earth in an instant. She's able to easily dance all around Icarus' laser vision, and is so fast that she can appear in multiple places at once, usually doing this to create speed doubles and attack someone from virtually every angle. And then, as an Eternal, Makari is able to unleash some crazy powerful attacks, like overpowering and knocking around Icarus, the most powerful of all the Eternals, and doing it again and again and again, or knocking around Deviants and sending them flying through the air. She can even spam shockwaves and unleash sonic attacks. Makari is also an extremely skilled and formidable hand-to-hand -hand combatant with thousands of years of training and combat experience, making her one of the most powerful and one of the best fighters in the universe. So, who wins here? Well, let's break it down. Now, the name in the game here is definitely Speed. They're all crazy speedsters. But whichever one is the fastest is going to have a big advantage here in this fight. And so that's the first question we got to answer here which speedster is actually the fastest. And let's start with Quicksilver. Now, in the Quicksilver scene in X-Men Apocalypse, we know that the average detonation velocity for an explosion is 7,150 meters per second. The scene itself is 2 minutes and 24 seconds, or 144 seconds. Each for the X-Mansion, is 15,333 feet squared, so each side is 123 feet long. Half of this is 62 feet, or the length to the center, where the jet exploded. In meters, this is 18.86. So 1 750th of a second times 18.86 is 0 0.002 seconds. So the explosion happens in 20 microseconds. Quicksilver goes in and out a few times, but the fastest is when he gets Raven and the others from the explosion. It takes him four seconds to get to the place. Four seconds out of 144 seconds is 136. So 136 of 20 microseconds is 555.5 nanoseconds. In 555.5 nanoseconds, Quicksilver travels 18.86 meters. In a nanosecond, it travels 0 0.033 meters. One nanosecond times 360 billion is an hour. 0 0.003 times that is 11,880,000,000 meters per hour, or 7,381,000,000. 889 miles per hour, or Mach 9697, or 1.1% the speed of light. So then, what about Makari? Well, in the Eternals, Makari tries to find the location of the Emergence, and so she runs around the world, running past both the Christ the Redeemer statue, the Rio de Janeiro, and the Aqueducts. The distance from Rio to the Aqueducts is 9,541 kilometers, or 5,928 miles. It took about three seconds to run there. Given that distance and the time frame, that gives us a speed of 3,180,333 meters per second, or Mach 9,272, so sub-relativistic speeds. Then there's Sonic. And there are a few speed feats for him that we can calculate. For starters, Sonic ran from roughly the middle of Montana to the Pacific Ocean and back in like two to three seconds, meaning that he's moving somewhere between 1,857,626 meters per second to 2,786,440 meters per second, which is sub relativistic speed. 
He's also capable of seeing the world in complete slow motion, ranging from people being frozen, to bullets, to missiles, to even explosions and lasers being frozen. So that means that Sonic is potentially moving up to 35,750,000 meter per second in these moments, or relativistic speeds. And Sonic is potentially even much, much faster than that, because as he charges up and his chaos energy grows inside of him, well, he gets faster and faster as well. But then there's the Flash. And Flash is easy. He's faster than the speed of light. He's much, much faster than the speed of light. And light speed is moving at a little less than 300 million meters per second. And Flash is able to go much faster than the speed of light. He's easily the fastest person here. Quicksilver and Makari are just moving at 1% of his speed. Sonic at his best is moving at 10%. So Flash is the fastest one here. That's a huge advantage here in the fight. But then there's also other elements to this fight, like each speedster's power and attack force. Like if Flash is the fastest, but he can't actually put anyone else down, then the most he can do is just run around everyone else for all time. So we have to factor striking power in there too. Now for Quicksilver, he's able to punch Apocalypse around and send him flying with those attacks. But honestly, I don't think he ever really had a genuine shot at putting Apocalypse down. And once Apocalypse got hold of him, well, Quicksilver was taken out of the fight pretty instantaneously. He's definitely the weakest one here, at least in my opinion. With Makari, Woods, well, kind of the same thing. She was able to really beat up on Icarus and send him flying all around. And while I don't think that Makari had a genuine shot at putting Icarus down either, she was definitely doing more damage to Icarus and was doing better against Icarus than Quicksilver was doing against Apocalypse. Plus, just by virtue of being an Eternal, Makari is probably the strongest and toughest one here. There's even an argument for her being able to survive a planetary destruction, since the Eternals were meant to survive the birth of a new Celestial. Now, Sonic never really fought against or beat anyone that powerful. The most he did was outspeed and beat up on Knuckles. But then Sonic was able to absorb the seven Chaos Emeralds into himself, becoming Super Sonic, where his strength and speed are drastically increased. He's way tougher. He can take attacks on the giant Eggman robot. He can lift up the foot of the robot before flying straight through it and flew through that robot plenty more times before finally beating it. But that's only if it's Super Sonic. Regular Sonic isn't near on that same level. And then here comes the Flash, who's not just the fastest out of all of them, but he's also the most powerful too. He's trained Heart of Batman, and now he's able to tap into a whole new level of power. Like originally, Flash didn't even know how to properly throw a punch at super speed, but Batman was able to show him how to alter the density of his fist, meaning that he can now punch at super speed and with super strength. And Flash is now strong enough and skilled enough to take on Kryptonians. Now, most of the Kryptonians he fought against were unadapted Kryptonians. And it's kind of tough to say just how powerful an unadapted Kryptonian actually is. We know it's not the same as Superman, but maybe it's half of this Superman? Two thirds? After all, General Zod took a nasty bull rush and beat down from a rather pissed off Superman. He wasn't adapted yet. Namek and Feora were able to fight against Superman 2 in Smallville, put up a really good fight, and neither of them were adapted either. Flash was able to basically one-shot a lot of these Kryptonians, blowing apart their armor and taking them out of the fight. That's not even mentioning the other powers he's gained, like the ability to phase through attacks or launch powerful lightning around, 
lightning that can even injure Kryptonians. So who wins here? Well, I think it's gotta be the Flash. Quicksilver has been left behind a little while ago. He can't quite match up with the rest of them now. Sonic has a shot if he can become Super Sonic, but that's only with the Chaos Emeralds. And then Makari is definitely the most physically powerful one, probably the best fighter too, and you could have argued she would have won before the Flash. But now it's way more definitive. Flash is easily the fastest one here, and he's the only one who's powerful enough to legit one-shot Kryptonians, even kill them if he really wanted to. Barry has truly come into his own as the fastest man alive. The Flash wins. But what do y'all think? Sound off in the comments down below. I know you're gonna have thoughts and feelings on this one for sure. Maybe you stuck around this long and made it to the end of the video. That's amazing. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. And if you wanna go subscribe, well, go subscribe. You're gonna see more videos like this one every single week. I'll see y'all then. I'll see y'all next time.